class, we're going to go through a little video lecture and uh, we're going to be taking a look at continental margins. Before we go and we talk about continental margins, I'm going to go through the three primary provinces of the ocean. Uh, obviously, today we're talking about continental margins. Uh, they extend from sort of the coastline out um, maybe uh, 100 kilometers or so. And ultimately, as you can see in the bottom of this picture here, the continental margin is still part of the continent. Uh, a second major province is the deep ocean basin, which is right next to that. And then in the center of the ocean basin, um, and then a lot of ocean basins, there are these very large mid-ocean ridges. The, um, the continental margin itself uh, has a couple primary features. Uh, the, First feature is the continental shelf. It is a uh, very gentle sloping and it extends outward from the coastline. If you are thinking about, say, going to the beach here in Southern California and you're driving down the 605 to get to uh, Seal Beach, you notice that it doesn't seem like you're going downhill, but you're going downhill. Uh, that's the same idea as you were to take a boat away from the coastline. Um, it's getting a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, um, but it's somewhat gradual. At some point, it's going to change and it's going to get really sloped. Uh, that change point is called the shelf break. You see that right in the middle. And that area where it all of a sudden gets very steep is called the continental slope. Well, just like at the edge of our mountains, uh, you find a big pileup called alluvium or an alluvial fan. Same idea as tiny little particles. Uh, work their way under gravity, um, they begin to pile up on the bottom of the ocean floor. And so that portion is called the continental rise. Now, sometimes there are these large canyons uh, within uh, the uh, continental shelf through the slope uh, and into the rise. And then they would bring deposits uh, to create what is called a uh, deep sea fan. So that's really the continental margin. We're taking a look at a continental margin on the East Coast. And for continental margins, really you sort of break them up into two different categories. So I'm gonna skip ahead. And uh, the two basic types of continental margins are your West Coast type, which are active margins, uh, and then your East Coast type, which are considered passive margins. So some of the features that you see on a passive margin is that you have this really large continental shelf. And then you have, again, the slope and the rise, uh, and it goes into a large basin. Now, on the west coast, uh, in an active margin, you've got a smaller slope, and then it quickly goes down into possibly a trench uh, or some type of uh, a really deep basin. So again, since we are on the West Coast, uh, we live on an active margin. Uh, and then the East Coast uh, is considered a passive margin. Southern California is a little bit complex in that we are this uh, transform area, which means that there are transformed faults. They sort of go right through Catalina here. And what you notice is that there is the coastline, and then there is a basin, uh, and then there's an island or a ridge, and then there's another basin, and there's another island, uh, and then there's another basin. And that's called transform faulting. And if we take a little bit closer look, we can see that with uh, here in Los Angeles, we've got again that continental shelf, and then we've got a pretty a couple pretty large submarine canyons. We've got the Santa Monica Canyon here, uh, and then we've got the Redondo Canyon here. Um, look over here, we've got what's called the San Gabriel uh, Canyon. And uh, if you drive to Cerritos College, uh, most of the time you're gonna eventually drive over the San Gabriel River, which is sort of encased in cement. But once that gets to the ocean, it too carves a canyon uh, in that continental slope. So that's sort of our local area. I'm gonna now share website. Let me do a new share. Let me go to this viewer. This is something you're going to use for your assignments this week. And as I just pulled it up, you're going to want to uncheck this multi-bean. Right? You also want to uncheck uh, NOAA NOS hydrographic data. 
just to allow for a little bit better of a picture. You can see here, you can make it bigger or smaller, and then you can also just sort of click right on the map itself. So we're gonna zoom in here again to Southern California. We're not gonna use any um, identifiable features. We're just gonna use it to sort of go around and take a look and see some of the names of things. So again, here's Los Angeles. Uh, you've got the San Pedro Channel. Let me zoom in just a little bit more. And again, I mentioned uh, the Redondo Canyon. Here's the Redondo Canyon. Uh, here's Catalina Island. And you can see San Pedro Bay right here. Now, when you actually click on a point and you look down to the bottom left over here, it's gonna show you the elevation or how deep water is at that location. So again, if we want to know the San Pedro Basin, how the San Pedro Basin is, you can see it is 890 meters below the surface. Or if we want to check out right there on the San Pedro Bay, uh, that location is only 22 meters deep. So those are just a couple things that you can see and that's how to work this website. And hopefully you have a little bit better idea about continental margins and uh, have a great day.